Uh, okay, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Corentin. Uh, with my friend and partner Bastien, we are the, the co-founders of the company uh, uh, Pretty Simple, and we make our most famous game is called uh, Criminal Case. So maybe before we start the the presentation, I'd like to tell you a few things about our company. So um, Pretty Simple was founded in um, January uh, 2010. We have three games so far. We are a team of 45 people and we are among the top 10 Facebook game developers right now. Uh, the first game that we made is called My Shops. Uh, it's actually a simulation game where you have to, to create and to run your own shops, like small bakeries, small candy shops, and things like that. So it's obviously designed for the casual audience. Uh, our second game uh, is called uh, Magical Ride. It's a handless uh, runner where you can compete with your, with your friends. And our latest game, uh, which knows the, the which is uh, actually our biggest success, is called Criminal Case, uh, and it's a crime investigation game. Uh, at the moment, our game are available on Facebook and only on Facebook because we we think that uh, despite all you might have heard about Facebook, it's still the a great platform, a great online platform to uh, to launch new game. And to uh, and to reach a huge audience without uh, needing maybe huge uh, advertising uh, budget. So we are a huge fan of the Facebook platform, and we think that's the best online platform at the moment to launch a new game. And obviously, soon we will be on mobile and starting with iOS uh, by by the end of this 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 year or by the beginning of 2014. Well, today we're, we're going to tell, uh, tell you a little about uh, how we design our game Criminal Keys for virality and retention. So, for, 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 for those of you who might haven't tried Criminal Keys yet, I hope you will, uh, you will try the game soon because we think it's a, it's a great game. Uh, what the concept behind Criminal Keys is just every week you have to solve a new investigation, a new murder investigation uh, with, your, with your friends. The game loop is pretty simple, and that is to say, first you will have to look for clues uh, in crime scenes, so it's uh, basically um, a hidden object uh, gameplay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but in this screen you have um, a, poor, a, poor, a poor lady. Uh, she was killed in the baby's room, and maybe for those of you who, uh, who have uh, very good eyes, you can see a knife on a shelf uh, on the right, right wall of the, of the room. So first you have to just to look for, for clues regarding this investigation. Then you have to analyze, analyze those clues. So you just basically play mini games. In this one you have to uh, recover the, the correct shoe that the killer uh, wears uh, thanks to the, the shoe print. And by the end, you have to arrest the, the killer. So what you can see at the, the bottom of the UI is the killer's profile. Here, the killer's profile tells that the killer is a male, uh, about 6.3 feet high, <laughs> something like that. Six feet three inches. Six feet three inches, someone telling me. Uh, he has blue eyes, a bruise, and, and blonde hair. So for those of you who are good investigators, and I don't want to spoil you the case number six of criminal case, but it's the guy from the center. It's actually the cop who killed who kill the, the guy in this, in the, in this uh, investigation. I just tell you because the, the storyline in criminal case is quite important. Uh, criminal case has known an exceptional growth on the Facebook platform, com uh, going from uh, zero DAU to nine million DAUs in about six months and now the game is localized in nine languages because obviously for um, a hidden object game um, where the storyline and the characters are very important it's very important for us was very important for us to localize the game and uh, the game was even uh, grow even 
quicker when we started to localize to localize it and and we see a huge uh, correlation between uh, the retention on the game and obviously its language for instance if if uh, when, when we localize the game we see uh, like an increment in retention for french people when we localize the game in french by going from 30% to 40 45% on day 1 day 1 retention uh, in june uh, 2013 we reached the number 2 uh, rank on the Facebook platform in terms of DAU and in terms of MAU and the game is still doing fine after nine months being live. Uh, most of this audience comes from virality, that is say most of this audience is organic. 98% of our uh, user base comes from virality and only 2% comes from adver advertisement. Um, so I think everyone wants to know how how we make this this growth possible uh, with a low advertisement budget. What we think is that if you want to to know success on the Facebook platform, obviously you have to, to create a great game. I think that's that's the that's how we run. That's what everyone is trying to do. But but unfortunately, we we cannot explain how to create a great game. Just make a game that you like and. And hopefully it, it, it will be fun and, and people will, will like it. But what we can do is just sharing a few, exp a few of our experience, uh, giving you a few tips that we use to create criminal case, giving you a few metrics about, about the game. And you'll see maybe some of those uh, tips, some of those advice that we will share with you might sound as details, but in our mind they are very very important we think that we can create great games because uh, we take care of every details in the game and some advice in this presentation might be used for we think all all people that want to develop a successful game on the facebook platform so what we do to, to create criminal case the first thing that we that that we did was to choose a universal theme that is to say criminal investigation we think that everyone likes to like to investigate to make crime investigation if you see how many people uh, look at uh, procedural shows on tv like csi or criminal mice or uh, any 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 tv shows that you can like everyone like to like crime investigation for for instance if you have a look at this crime scene on the bottom left you can see a poor dead guy and when i see that what i'm thinking it's me i see myself as a <laughs> as a Japanese guy, <laughs> maybe because I, I, I love Japanese video game. And I think, oh, poor guy, I, I, must, I must catch his killer right now. I want to I wanna bring his killer to justice. And all my gamers friends are thinking exactly the same. And my girlfriend too. And also my grandma and even my cat wants to bring the killer to justice. So criminal case, we think it's a universal theme. So when you start playing the game, you say, okay, I want to bring the killer to justice. And it's quite important to continue playing the game. The second thing is that we made it casual. Let's say even very, very casual. For those of you who've been playing criminal case, just imagine one moment if the chief police officer was telling you, okay, you didn't find the fingerprint that was hidden in crime scene number three. The killer escaped. You failed. Your loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it wouldn't work. Uh, for sure, the casual audience don't want to fear to, to be afraid of losing. They want to be sure that they will catch the killer. And when you play a criminal case, you, you, you are sure that you will bring the killer to justice. And we think that is very, very important. And we make it very easy for everyone to be able to bring the killer to justice. And just make a very casual and relaxing experience when you play criminal case. And the last thing that we did is that from the very, very beginning, from the very first concept of the game, we designed the game for virality and retention. And we don't think that for creating a great game or a, success, a successful game, you need to have, we don't think you, you need to have a universal theme. Many games are very, very successful without having a universal theme. Also, you don't need to have a casual game. I mean, uh, at the moment, the, the games that are the most successful in the world, they are more mid-core. 
But if you want to have virality and retention, we think that you should respect this third point, that is to say, design your game, thinking, retention, and virality as part of the game. They, they must be part of the game. They must be think from the very, very beginning. So, um, so maybe now let's, let's focus on what we did to create virality on, on criminal case. Well, when, when, you, when you want to create vi virality, you have to forget everything about doing a great game or something like that. You just have to think one, 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 one only thing. Player must invite their friend by the end of the first session, and that must be your only goal. If they don't invite at the first session, they won't come back, and they won't invite their friends, never. So the first session must be designed so by the end of the first session, user will invite their friend. And please forget everything else. So this is a picture which represents an ideal first play session. Actually, your user will, will have a lot of fun playing your game, and by the end, he will send a lot of invites. But that's just ideal. In real life, they will have to face a lot of problems during their first, their first session. And those problems have been represented as monsters on this picture. And we have three main monsters. The first one is the loading monster. The second one, <laughs> I don't remember the second one, and I can see it. It's a comprehension monster. And the third one, it's about technical issues and things like that. First, the, the loading monsters. Uh, I don't know how many time you spend on your loading screen, but I can tell you that we can spend like weeks on our loading screen to make it as light and as appealing as possible. Because that, that is the first thing that your user will see, and that's very important that they stay uh, till the end of the loading screen. In this chart, you can see that, for instance, with a 10 megabytes uh, game loading screen, you will lose almost 13% uh, of your user. And if your game weighs only 3.5 megabytes, you will only lose 7%. That's 6% more on for only the loading screen. So it's very, very important. For instance, criminal case, if you put, if you consider just the total weight of the game with all this crime scene, all this investigation, all these, its recurring characters, the game weighs about 500 megabytes. And we made it 3.5 megabytes for the first loading session. And we're still working, working on it to make it 2.5 megabytes and losing even less player. So uh, just make sure that your loading screen is nice and very, very light. The, 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 second, the second thing uh, um, concerns the, the confusion, that is to say, uh, how to make easy for people to understand your game. And the only thing that we do is that we do play test with real people in our office. And we just have a look at how they understand the game, how they play it. And we have a, a rule, it's we never help the play tester. Sometimes they are they get stuck and they, they, they would like to have our help, but we don't help them at all. And we do everything that we can so everyone can understand all the rules of the game without any help from us. That's pretty tough because most of the time when someone gets stuck in front of you, you want to help him and say, okay, you should click on this button, or maybe haven't you seen that, 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 that other button, I don't know. But do not help play tester. And with, with criminal case, we just add, everywhere in the game, a green action button. And if you click on this green action button, you will progress in your investigation. And that's quite hard to achieve. That's easy to say, but adding a green action button everywhere in the game so that the user can click on it and make sh and is sure that you will progress in the game, that's quite hard to achieve. But by the end of this, 100% of our play testers were able to complete the first user session in the game without our help. And what is funny is that only 50% of them said they like the game. So <laughs> just be sure that when you play test your game, you make it not to know if they will like your game or not, but just to make sure that they understand the rules, that they can play the, group, that they can play the game, that they can progress in your game. But even with only 50% that, that playtester who like criminal case, the, 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 the game was a huge success. Because maybe your playtester was not our co
hardcore audience, but they were able to tell us if they understood the rules or not. Um, the last monsters re uh, regard uh, technical issues. Um, I don't know, we've been solving hundreds, maybe thousands of, of technical issues with criminal cases. And how we do that? The first thing is that we track every single click in the game, and especially during the tutorial. The second thing is that we observe where we have drops, and then we try to find if there is any problem, any technical problem, and fix the problem. I'm just gonna give you one single example, but I, we, we could give you 100 and maybe more. Uh, this uh, line chart represents the, the tracking of the steps in the tutorial, and as you can see, there's a huge drop between step seven and step eight, and we didn't know why. So we get to step seven in the, in the, in the tutorial, and here is how it looks. Okay, that's just a simple screen where the user is asked to share something with their friend because they, they are leveled up in the game. So we didn't see any problem. But actually, maybe some of you have noticed that we are in full screen mode. So now if I exit the full screen mode, you know what I, what I can see? There's a Facebook pop-up that was hidden behind the flash. So what we decided to do, it was just to automatically exit the full screen mode when we get to this screen. This example is very, very simple. But if you, if you really uh, track every click and if you observe every drop, you will find a lot of technical issues. And sometimes we were fighting just for 1% of conversion rate between two steps, and sometimes even less. And so we correct, uh, we, we fixed a lot of problems like this. So yes, by the end, the, the drop is, let's say, normal. Um, with all these works regarding those three monsters, uh, we have this funnel, that is to say, uh, with 100 people starting the game, we still have 80% by the end of the 35 steps of criminal case tutorial. And we think it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So that's a, uh, I think it's a good metric uh, to, to share with you. And also you might know that the first session in criminal case lasts about, let's say, 18 minutes for most people. Well, now your first session is really enjoyable for most of your users, and they are about to send invites. Okay, we just want to let you know that we spend a lot, a lot of time on this first time user experience. Uh, that is to say, about 30% of our dev time. Most people are creating game in this time, but that's only for us to explain the rules of our game, 30% of our dev time, that, 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 that is to say, uh, six months with 25 people. Some people create like maybe two or three games with that time, and that's only for our first user experience. Well, what we think is that many, many game developers can create great game, but unfortunately, uh, some, some, some of those games won't be successful because a lot of people will uh, have left the game before discovering it's a great game. So our advice is just to spend time to make sure that people will discover the, how, how, great, how great is your game. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of work, but I think we think it's worth it. So remember what I said at the beginning, people must invite by the end of their first session, and that's the only, only really important thing. And now, at, at the moment, they just have finished their first game session and they enjoy it, but they haven't sent invite to their friend now. So, okay, now we're gonna help them send invites to their friends. What, what, what do we do for that? The first thing is to give them a good reason to invite their friend, a real good reason, not uh, yeah, a real good reason. The, the second thing is to choose the right timing to, to ask them to invite their friends. And the last thing is to make it very, very easy to send invites to all their friends. Regarding the good reason, it's pretty easy in a game like Criminal Case, but it has been designed like this. In Criminal Case, you need energy to do anything in the game. You need energy to progress 
in, the, in, in your investigation. And people just want to have energy all the time. And we designed the game so people are missing energy all the time. So if we want people to invite their friend, we just have to promise one thing. We promise them more energy if they invite their friend. But that's only because the energy is very, very important in the game. You really need it. Then the second thing is to choose. You choose the right timing to ask people to invite their friends. Hmm. And here, here is what we, we, we have done. Uh, this is a, a screen of criminal case, and as you can see, the player doesn't have uh, energy. He only has one point of energy, so he can't play the game anymore. So he's going to click on the crime scene to see if he can play more. And when he clicks on the crime scene, here is what happened. Okay, you don't have enough energy. So obviously, if you want, you can pay for more energy. We are in a free-to-play game, we are selling energy. But most people at the time, after the first session, they don't want to pay. It's maybe it's too soon, and most people don't want, will never pay in your game. So uh, we are creating frustration at that moment. I want to play more, but I can't. The only way to, 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 to play more is to pay, and I don't want to pay. So I close this pop-up, and then the relief. Now you can have more energy if you invite your friend. And it works very well just because we have created frustration before displaying this very pop-up where they have to invite their friends. Now the last thing is just to make it very, very easy to send as many invites as possible to their friends. So if you have a look at this pop-up, it might seem simple, and it is, but we made three important things. The first one, Okay, all the friends are pre-selected. You don't have to select your friends one by one. Then you can send to all of your friends with only one button. And the last thing, we added a progress bar. I don't know what is it for you, but when I see a progress bar in a game, I just want to feel it. Even if it's completely stupid, but I want to feel it. So people have to invite all their friends if they want to feel the, 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 the progress bar. And it works. Actually, it works very well. Well, so by the end of the first session, users like your game, they've been able to enjoy it, and they are sending invites to their friends. So one criminal case player is sending invites to a bunch of players, and among, one, among all those players, one of them will accept this invite, and hopefully like criminal case too. Okay, but what is interesting to know is that invites only represent 50% of the total number of installs in criminal case. So maybe you might wonder where the remaining 50% come from. And for this, I'm going to ask <laughs> I'm going to ask Bastien to tell you where, where, where they come from. Thanks. Um, well, uh, as Quentin uh, told, um, told you, uh, half of the installs, half of the virality comes from invites. So um, in criminal case, we uh, used another great channel to, um, to drive installs. This channel is called Open Graph Stories. So uh, what is an Open Graph Story? So um, here's a screenshot of a um, Facebook news feed. And uh, here's how it goes. Um, this is, these are two open graph stories, so um, an open graph story, you can see it like a, um, a custom like action on Facebook. You know the like button, you know the like action. Actually, you can design your own word, your own action, and post it on Facebook. So you have one action, here it is worked, Julie McDermott worked on two murder cases. It's worked instead of like. And um, it's one action. Also, it's um, obviously the, it's um, pictures, huge pictures and beautiful pictures, and also titles, new murder cases. So an action, a picture, and a good title. And well, in criminal case, this um, channel, this virality channel, uh, happened to perform amazingly. So uh, amazingly, I mean really, really, it was really huge. So it is um, open graph installs are, um, that's the white line in the, in the graph. And so what you see here, it's 
it even outperforms uh, traditional invites uh, by a factor more than two sometimes. And um, at, the beginning, at the beginning, it was even five times more installs from open graph stories than invites. And by uh, January or February, there were close to 100,000 installs per day only coming from open graph stories alone. So by the end, it tends to, uh, to get balanced between uh, invites and open graph stories, but it is really important as a virality channel. So um, obviously we need, we need cool stories, cool things to post. Um, so what is a cool open graph story? Uh, uh, let's take this as an example. It's a, it's a nice picture. It's the story of someone who has been drowned into concrete. That's a horrible death. And it is visually appealing. You see this, uh, this hand, and also it triggers curiosity. I really want to know what happened to this poor girl, because she's a girl. And um, so we have a bunch of um, very, very uh, interesting stories to post in criminal case. We, have inve we are investigating, cr investigating crime scenes. We are working on murder cases, as you saw. And also, uh, we also autopsy victims. This is really, really uh, uh, interesting for, our, for users. They really want to know what's happening when you autopsy someone. And um, so now that you have the, the skeleton of your stories, you have to work on them to make them perform even better. So how do you create um, uh, performing open graph stories? Basically, it's the same as traditional marketing. You um, happen to A-B test pretty much everything. And the most important is the visual. So um, let's take an example here. We have three uh, different um, visuals for the same open graph. A story related to a murder, um, to a crime scene. So which one works the best? Actually, it's the one in the middle. I don't really know why, but users know why. And uh, um, this one um, has 18% uh, more in terms of click. So we chose this one by A-B testing it. And also, we, uh, we can A-B test the title. You see these are the two same pictures, but underneath the picture, you see dirty bathroom and new crime scene. So um, which one? Uh, performs better, actually it's new crime scene. So we took this one and it's 9% more click. So eventually by the end of the road you um, A-B test pretty much everything and it's a huge work, it's very tedious and in criminal case we A-B tested more than 500 images and titles for open graph stories and, these, um, and with that we uh, had amazing results, the result that you saw. And in terms of overall virality, so if you sum up um, a good first session and you invite at the right time with a good reason, and also when you, if, when you tune and you A-B test pretty much every open graph story, you happen to make 660,000 installs per day at peak. That's the, vi the virality we had, the organic growth that we really had on criminal case. So if we had to buy this traffic, uh, we, we, we would have spent half a million dollars a day to get this traffic. So it is huge, huge savings. So you, um, it's, it's, uh, it's really worth taking the time to tune your first session and to tune um, the invites and the open graph. So that's not bad. Half a million uh, dollars saved every day, that's not bad, obviously. So, uh, so much for variety, if I, yeah, I have time. Uh, it's time to take care of retention. So what makes people come back? What do you think? Uh, sometimes people say it's because the game is good, so people uh, come back by themselves. False. Uh, they come back because they get a request or a notification from the game and forget everything else. People only come back because they are solicited somehow. They get a request or a notification from the game. So these come from retention channels, and in criminal case, and um, in Facebook in general also, uh, there are three main uh, retention channels. Requests, feed posts, and add to user notifications. And I'm going to give you some examples of each. Uh, the first one, the most important one, it's requests. We have a retention feature called Send Free Energy. So this pop-up uh, shows up every morning, when, uh, once a day, when someone logs in criminal case. And um, you, with this pop-up, you can send free energy. Remember, it's the most valuable resource in the game. And you can send free energy to um, all of your friends um, playing the game. And 
it's very important. You don't send energy to people who do not play the game. That would be spam, and people wouldn't do it. So you need to take care so that people send free energy only to their friends who are already playing the game. And that becomes a cool habit to do every morning. That wouldn't be cool to spam everyone every morning, but it is cool to send energy because everyone needs energy. And so when I send, what is even cooler when I said energy, it's that um, when I receive energy, because my friends are giving me uh, energy every morning, and well, when I arrive in the game, I have free energy. So uh, Dawn, it's my friend on the um, criminal case, she tells me, here's two extra energy for you. Could you help me by sending me some energy back? Yeah, for sure. So I click on the green button. And what happens also, I get my two energies, and I send her one energy to thank her. So that is called mutual re-engagement. So you see every morning I send energy, I send requests to my friends, and by accepting my energy, my friends re-engage me. They send me requests back. So we, we, um, we are making tight links between engaged users, very tight links, and pretty much all the time you receive requests between players who are playing criminal case, and that's cool, and everyone clicks, and we have a huge retention rate by that. Another retention feature is uh, the feed posts. Um, you saw it um, at the beginning when you level up, you can share, you can post something on your wall. So um, it's not really new, there is a pop-up, you click on share and there's a story in your wall and John is now level 33 in criminal case. But it's not really the usual thing. Here, look at um, what people see exactly, it's not really, they're not really reading the title of the story. They are reading actually, they are looking actually at the picture and the picture says get this. The picture is uh, aimed at the receiver, not the sender, the receiver, because we want people who see this in their newsfeed to click on it. Because if they click on it, they will be re-engaged and we will have good retention on the game. So keep in mind that it's not, it's not really interesting to post uh, some kind of image with level 33 written in it, because it is just nonsense. What is really interesting is to focus on the receiver. And obviously, as we said, the most um, valuable resource is in the game is the energy. So as a receiver of this, when I click on the link, I get energy. So cool, it's an orange juice, so this is giving me energy. And what you can see here, again, the green button here, when I receive, this orange juice, I send cards to the one who sent me orange juice. So again, this is mutual re-engagement. And um, I won't get into the specifics of the um, lucky cards that I send, but again, it's energy somehow. So it's very, very valuable. Uh, finally, okay. Finally, um, the last um, retention channel that is very interesting is called app to user notification. So you see, uh, if you know Facebook, um, there is a little menu here with uh, the earth and you uh, happen to see notification that um, come uh, from the app, not from, an, uh, not from um, a user action, but it's really the app that generates those messages. And actually we generate those messages when there are very important events in the game, like an analysis of, um, of a piece of, um, of evidence is finished. And, um, and when I click on this, I go back to the game. So it is really a retention feature. And actually there are approximately 500,000 clicks per day through this channel and we have a 29 click through rate on this on this very um, um, notification that you see here so they really really uh, relevant information for the player and they just can't help clicking on it in terms of metrics the real deal um, in criminal case day one retention uh, when you mix all this um, you um, we, ha we, we have approximately 52 percent at peak, so that's really huge. And um, day seven, retention rate, we had approximately 39% retention rate, uh, three nine. So that's really, really important. Usually when you get 39 at day one, you are already very happy. 
as a conclusion. Uh, <laughs> so it's a fact that, that players in a um, criminal case uh, come back on day one, that is the day after they install the game. They come back on day one because they receive free gifts from the friends they invited the day before. So every word is important here. Players come back on day one because they receive free gifts. So day one and free gift, there is retention. And the retention comes from where? It comes from the friend they invited the day before. So actually the retention of those players come from their virality. So retention and virality are tightly linked and you cannot have one without the other. So uh, you can put it in a, in a, on a, a small picture, a small drawing here. You have a female player here sending uh, through all the virality channels that we set up, uh, lots of invites to, um, to friends, and some friend is going to play also criminal case. And the, the day after, he's going to send her a free gift. And this free gift is going to make her play again the game. And if she hadn't invited any friend, I'm pretty sure she would have left criminal case. And because we have mutual re-engagement, when you, when you play for the second, uh, the second day, you, you play for a very long time. So as a conclusion, keep this in mind, there is no retention without virality. And so if you need to fix something in your game, if you need to fix your growth, um, that's what we made during the first weeks of um, uh, um, live um, in criminal case. You have to focus on virality first and then retention, not the other way around. Sometimes people are trying to uh, to fix the retention and then afterwards the virality. No, no, no. Fix the virality first and then the retention. And that's a true story, <laughs> of course, because this is a story of criminal case. And that's it. This is the whole team and they, everybody says thank you. And I say thank you too. Questions? Uh, thank you for a very beautiful presentation, extremely insightful, so both aspects are really nice to have. Um, you, one of the slides show you had 153 friends that were invited and that could send you an energy and then an energy back, that's 300 energies in one day. Um, do you have a problem with so much virality with people having thousands of friends, sending them energy and making the game less attractive because of that? Do you have you know, the size of a group of friends becoming a problem because you're so efficient in variety? Um, well, the, I think it's more, it's more about a choice. Do you want to, some people to have like 100, but some players in criminal case I have like 2,000 2, and or 3,000 friends that they are sending energy every day. No, we don't think it's a problem because uh, those players are uh, a, a, a huge force for the game to recruit new people and to re-engage new people. So that was a choice from the very beginning, not to give any limit in sharing uh, energy. And obviously some people have more energy than they need to finish the game. But they are so good, so good to recruit and to re-engage new, new, new users and to re-engage users that we prefer to, to leave it that way. But that, that's a choice, and I don't know if it's a good choice, but that's the one we made. Two questions. Um, <clears throat> most people don't like going through tutorials. They just want to get at it. Um, you spent an enormous amount of time on your, tor your tutorials. Can you uh, tell us um, if you're monitoring whether people are actually using the tutorials and, and what the dynamics of that is? That's number one. Um, and number two is, in terms of retention over time, I see that I haven't played your game, but obviously through this I see the pattern. If I'm a long-term player, 
um, might I get bored kind of with the pattern and how do you either increase the complexity or change it enough from session to session so that I want to play because it continues to engage me? Okay, well, I, I think the two questions are, are very interesting. Regarding the, the, the first one, uh, for instance, I hate tutorials. I don't like them, and, and most of the time I don't even read the text. So we try to design the tutorial to make it just f fun to play. And even if you are said where to click, and even if you don't read any text, I think you can understand the rules of the game. So that's why we spend so many time. We even designed the game so for someone, somebody who doesn't speak the language of the game can play the game. And even giving hints in the crime scene for people who can't read the name of the items. For instance, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give a, a small example which is very, very important in my mind. In the very first crime scenes, the first six items that you have to find are words that usually people know, even if they are in, in English. For instance, you have to find a car. I think everyone knows what is a car. So you have to find the body of the victim. You have to find a cigarette. Things that are very, very easy to know. And that helps some people to continue the game even if they were not, uh, if they were not speaking the language very well. So I think in criminal case we made the tutorial fun and you cannot skip it because it's very, very important to understand the rules and even if the game loop is pretty simple, it's quite hard to understand that you need to then to compare all the pieces of evidence that you found with the, the visual aspect of the, of the suspects. But yes, that's a, that's a huge work to make the tutorial funny. And regarding the second question that was also very interesting, I don't remember what you asked me for. But <laughs> yeah, I'd like to add something. Um, the tutorial is something. Um, the first user session is another one. Actually, the first user session uh, spans a little bit um, um, out of the tutorial. The tutorial is quite quite small, but um, the um, the first user, the first time user experience, is a, a, li a little bit longer. So um, so what we, we monitor everything. And no, uh, to answer your question, the tutorial is not really a problem in criminal case. You can just click, 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 and click on the green button, and it, it will always work. And the other question was regarding the, the long-term, um, the long-term retention, and uh, the fact that people could get bored. Actually, um, well, it's the complexity of the game. Does the complexity of the game change, or is it the same pattern? Every absolutely not. Um, we made games that um, were um, more and more complex over time, like my shops. My shops, the more shops you had in your street, the more it took time, it was taking time to, 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 uh, to, to take care of them. And so by the end, when, when you had 10 shops, it was just nonsense. So people were still asking, so we made 11 shops, and they were still asking, so we made 12 shops, but by the end, it was three billion, three hundred billion coins to, to buy the last shop. So it was really nonsense. So in criminal case, we uh, we didn't make the same mistake. And so the when you reach um, the case number three, I guess or four, you get an experience that is quite tailored to a certain format. And for the rest of the life of the game, it won't change. So it's like a good, uh, a good series. It's like really like CSI. If, you, if, you, if you're into CSI, the, the TV show, the TV series, if you look at how the, um, the stories are written, it's always the same story. Always, always, always. Actually, there are two ones, two or three ones, which are interleaving, but it's always the same format. And you like it. And you like it because it's always the same thing. In criminal case, Every case is pretty much the same experience. So the, um, the settings are different, the objects are different, the characters are different, the dialogues are different, but it's always the same old case. And we do not try to add features all along. It's like a good crossword or a good Sudoku. You don't want to add features to a Sudoku. It's already good like that. You just want the numbers to change. You just want the challenge to change. You don't want the experience to be too com complex over time. So basically, it won't. Um, it's, it's, it has been designed to, to last very, very long. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. <coughs> Hi, I have a 
a question around Open Graph. Um, I thought your finding that new murder case performed better than the specific crime scene was really interesting and was wondering if you had any hypothesis around why um, and also whether you found that the stories themselves mattered more or less than the images associated with the stories. Um, uh, so you, your question is, uh, do, do, do we know why a new crime scene, the title new crime scene performed better than uh, a more descriptive one? The answer is no, we don't know, and we don't care. We A-B tested it, we, choose, we chose the best one. Actually, we thought that we, we had the idea to, 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 um, to, uh, to take new crime scene instead of a more descriptive one, instead of dirty bathroom, and put new crime scene everywhere instead of the real name of the crime scene. So we had this idea because we, yes, we knew that new crime scene was very appealing, but actually, uh, so we don't really know why, but we had the, this feeling that it would eventually perform better and it did. And what was the rest of the question? Um, actually, two things. Um, the action itself. The action is really key. The action that is uh, the most performing one is investigate. Investigate. Investigate a crime scene. Because people want to know well, Corentin is investigating, Corentin is investigating the crime scene, I want to be part of that. Don't know why. Yeah, Corentin said it, it's because criminal investigation, it's like a universal thing, and you want to investigate also, you want to find the killer. It's, it's a nerve, you know. And um, so the action itself is very, very important, as important as the, um, the picture itself. The picture is very important. Actually, the um, description of the picture tends to, um, to matter a little bit less. Uh, actually, I have one question. Um, concerning the open graph, um, the actions get triggered. Um, how do they get triggered? Is that a user uh, trigger? Is that a game trigger? Is that, some, is that a sponsor pay type thing? Are you, is that like a paid advertisement? What is exa exactly? Good question. Um, open graph stories, open graph posts, are um, automatic. So they do not really need um, um, a user to click on something to, uh, so that they are posted to the platform. Actually, it's our own servers who are keep uh, posting this all day long. But the thing is, it doesn't post um, um, randomly. It posts when the user does the action in the game. So it, it, is, it is not exactly someone who is clicking on something. It's the server who sends the, uh, who posts the stuff to Facebook, but the server does it because the user made this in the game. And it's totally free. But you can boost the distribution of the, um, of the open graph. So that's a whole, um, that would be a whole, a whole speech. But um, a Facebook, there's a quite complex uh, distribution algorithm at Facebook. Uh, so there's a competition between the posts in the news feed and the most engaging ones, the, the ones who are most, um, uh, the most clicked, tend to appear more. That's normal. And um, you, you, if you have poor performing um, open graph stories, Facebook lets you pay to boost the distribution of this. But actually, if you have poor performing open graph stories, I wouldn't recommend to spend money on it. But if you have high performing open graph stories like we do, if you put a dollar on it, yeah, you can have really, really, really um, more people with this. So uh, we were experimenting with open graph stories, but found that like one of the limitations was you could only have a tiny little image. Mm -hmm. It was like an icon size, and we wanted more richer images. So we experimented with sharing photos instead, but then you lost the ability to do insight tracking and all the nice things that Open Graph kind of deals with. How did you guys address that or get around it or, yeah, uh, oh, how did okay. you make the most out of Open Graph? Okay, so that, that's a very precise question regarding Open Graph and, okay, uh, actually uh, Open Graph stories can be displayed in two different sizes in, the, in people news feed, uh, a small asset or a big asset and uh, obviously everyone would like to have the big asset. Uh, so we don't know exactly 
how Facebook decide which open graph story will be displayed in uh, the small or the big size. But what we know is that they are a B testing things with your own open graph story and they, they are looking for the one performing the best. And if, for instance, the big asset performs better than the small asset, then they keep the big asset. Uh, that's all what we know. And, but for, for some time in criminal case, we have the big assets and then we get back to the small asset and then we get back to the big assets. So just, you just have to try to make the, the best, the best image is possible and <laughs> just rely on, 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 Facebook, uh, on Facebook algorithm. That's all you can do. Large ones. You need to post large, large ones. ones. Yeah, but, but post large ones. Because yeah, yeah. if, if they want to display big, like big, six, big, big pictures, six, six, 600, 600 pixels, pixels by, by 600. Minimum. Yeah. The, 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 best, uh, the best format for those. One, one more. Any more questions? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, you guys, we're not done yet. Please sit down. <laughs> Please, seriously, come back. There's someone leaving the room before it's over. Yeah. I saw your face. <laughs> they will not be invited back to Casual Connect. I'm going to kill you. So uh, pr that was pretty simple. And uh, big round of applause for pretty simple. Thank you.